Good morning, good morning, good morning. Happy Friday to you guys. Look at this. We have made it to the end of another week. Let's give God some praise about that. We are in a new day that we've never seen before, a day we'll never see again, but it is the day that the Lord has made. So guess what? We're going to rejoice and be glad in it. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Welcome to the Gathering of Hearts on this morning. I am Regina Banks, your GPS to wholeness, aka I am the Heart Gatherer. And this morning, your daily dosage is a continuation of what we've been talking about all week, Facing the Monster Within Part 4, Facing the Monster Within Part 4. So I'm going to jump right on in here because it's a lot to cover. So yesterday, <clears throat> we started talking about how do I face this monster within? And the first thing that we said was we have to be aware of our salvation, right? Be aware of your salvation and that that salvation gives me access to God's power. It gives me access to God's presence and it gives me access to God's plan. And so the second thing when we are facing the monster within that we need to be aware of is we've got to be aware of the power of our thoughts. That's right. Of our thoughts. Those thoughts, those thoughts, those thoughts will get you in trouble. Remember, the Bible says if you thought a thing, you might have, you might as well have done it. And so those thoughts are things that can get us in trouble, right? With that face it, that monster. And so let's go back to David. I think it was on Monday. We started talking about David and I mentioned how um, brokenness could have started in David's life because when um, Samuel came to find out which one of Jesse's sons was going to be the king, remember, Jesse didn't even think of David. Remember, you know, Samuel had to say, wait a minute, it has to be another one because none of them are it. And he was like, oh, let me go get, you know, David. So imagine how David must have felt like I'm an afterthought, like you're not even thinking of me, like out of sight, out of mind. And this is how brokenness starts as a young child. But when it's not dealt with, it grows. And so when we look back at David. Remember, David was forgotten, out of sight, out of mind, but he was still chosen. And that's what we need to remember. No matter what has taken place in our lives, we are still chosen. Okay, so now he was chosen. He was a shepherd boy the least of them, you know, he, um, due to battles and wars, he was forced to be violent. You know, none of us grow up wanting, wanting to be violent, but because of his life, that's what happened. Um, all of this disqualified him from building the temple, although he had a heart to want to do it, but he couldn't, but then he thought so much. We all know when the first things most people think of, um, when you think of David, after thinking of <clears throat> one after God's own heart, the first thing you think about is the story or the account of Bathsheba, right? Let's look at that Bathsheba. Now, first, let's go back to all of the things that took place. He was forgotten where the brokenness got started, wasn't dealt with, you know, all of that. We get to the story of Bathsheba. He kept thinking on her and thinking on her and thinking on her and thinking on her, watching her, watching her, those thoughts, those thoughts, those thoughts, so much that he concocted a plan. You know, he sent for her, he sexed her, he impregnated her. And then, you know, that plan again, you know, let's send for the husband. Let's try to make the husband come home and do what they need to do. The husband is like, no, I'm not doing that. Not while my men are out there on the front line on war. I can't do that. And you know, this is me, Pastor G, I tell a great story story, love to tell a great story, paraphrasing. Um, I'm not doing that. <clears throat> So what does David do? That plan isn't working. Send him back out to war, put him on the front line where he's going to be killed, you know, and you know, we know the story Uriah is killed and um, comes back and Nathan comes back and says something to David. He does what we call a, 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 a Jericho, a, a, a Jericho, Jer, Jericho parable, um, getting all tongue tied here, um, where you tell somebody something. You already know what it is, but you want them to judge it. And it's basically them. So, you know, uh, Nathan begins to tell him the story of the man that has a lamb. He raises him as a child. You know, then uh, the man, the rich man comes, the rich man's having a party. He has all of these lamb. And instead of using the ones that he has, he takes away from the one that the man that only has one is raising a lamb like it's with his 
his family like a child. David is upset. He was just like, um, oh my God, I can't believe somebody would do that. You know, he pretty much says, take his head and put it on a platter. And so then uh, Nathan is like, dude, that is you. And, you know, of course, Nathan, and I'm sorry, Nate, David, he, you know, he comes clean. He doesn't try to, you know, get out of it. He comes clean. But we, um, and that, that thing stays on his house forever. And so once Amon rapes Tamar, David can't do anything about it because he's pretty much guilty of the same thing. This thing now stays in his household forever. Pastor G, why are you telling us all this? Because it started out with a thought. It was his thoughts. It was his thoughts lusting, wanting Bathsheba, watching her. All of this started with the thought. So David's thoughts caused him to lust after another man's wife, sin for her, sleep with her, impregnate her, sin for the husband, try to get the husband to sleep with her, you know, and then sent him to the front line to die. And this all came from thoughts. This is why we have to get our thoughts under wrap, you know, get some control over them. And remember, I've shared with you guys <clears throat> the monster within me and how my thoughts had me so messed up that even when I was introduced to help, I did not want it. Why? Because of my thoughts, because of the pride, because of the revenge that I wanted. I remember when my, my late pastor was trying to talk to me, trying to help me. Jesus can do it. God can do it. And I felt like this. You want me to trust a man that I cannot see when I could not trust a father that I could see. All because of thoughts, had bad thoughts. But you know, he's God. God can heal us, but we've got to allow it. Going back to Monday on Tuesday, we've got to allow God to do it. We've got to release God to do that. And so how do we, um, we have to be, how do we, uh, uh, attack this monster within with our thoughts. We've got to be aware of the power of our thoughts. Um, Deuteronomy 30, 19 says that we have a choice. Today, I'm giving you a choice of two ways. And I ask heaven and earth to be witnesses of your choice. You can choose life or death. The first choice will bring a curse. So choose life. Then you and your children will live. And so we've got to make a choice. Do I want to continue to let my thought life control me? Do I want to continue to let my thought life make all of the decisions for me? Or do I want to get in the will of God? I have to make a choice. Do I want wholeness or, you know, do I not? And so the first thing when I realize the power of my thoughts, the first thing is it gives me the ability to switch my brain. You know, I was going to go here, right? Romans 12 to amplify says it like this, and do not be conformed to this world any longer with its superficial values and customs, but be transformed and progressively changed as you mature spiritually by the renewing of your mind, focusing on godly values and ethical attitudes so that you may prove for yourselves what the will of God is, that which is good and acceptable and perfect in his plan, excuse me, and purpose for you. And so we've got to allow God, you know what I'm going to say, to switch our brain. We cannot continue to think the way that we used to think. Remember, I'm always saying, if you're not transforming, you're conforming. And so if you are not transforming to the things of God, you're conforming to the world. And so think about this. When we think about David, remember, David kept thinking on something that was not good for him. David was thinking on something that was not a part of God's plan for his life. David was thinking on something that was not God's way. And so if we continue to think on things that are not of God, we're going to act on those things. That's what happens. The more you think about it, the next thing you're going to do it. It's something simple. We think on eating fried chicken, um, seafood, whatever it is, that's your thing. You think on it enough and you find yourself grabbing those keys, getting in the car, and you're going to get it if 
if you don't already have it in your house. It's your thoughts that we've got to learn how to control. When we understand the power of our thoughts, we can do anything. And so the first thing when I get a hold of the understanding and being aware of the power of my thoughts, I realize this. Number one, it gives me the ability to switch my brain. The second thing that it does, it gives me the ability to take my thoughts captive. Second Corinthians 10, four and five, and I'm reading it in the King James version, the American edition. So that's KJVAE. It says this, for the weapons of warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations and every hot thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of God. And so I've got to now learn how that when those thoughts come, I've got to grab that thing, take a hold of that thing and make it bow down and make it obey the word of God, which means this, I'm getting control of my flesh. I'm getting control of the carnal mind. I'm allowing the spirit in me to rise and I'm taking control. I will no longer let my my flesh can control me. I will no longer let, uh, be crucified by my flesh, but now I'm letting the spirit man reign and I'm saying, look, thought, we're not doing this today and I'm making that thought bow down to the obedience of God. So I might have a thought of sickness. I might feel like, oh, what the doctor said is true, but then I've got to grab hold of that thing and say, listen here, the Lord thy God said he is the Lord thy God that healeth me, that no weapon formed will prosper. You know, it may form, but it's not going to prosper. So I've got to grab hold of that thought that's trying to take control, that's trying to go against the word of God. Bow down, brother. Bow down, sucker. I've got to make that thought bow down and obey the word of God. I've got to grab it, take captive of it. And then the last thing. Number three, when I'm aware of the power of my thoughts, number three, it gives me the ability to jump from the old to the new. You know that TikTok challenge when you see somebody, they dress one way and then they go boom, boom, and then you see something new. That's what it's like when it says this. It gives me the ability to jump from the old to the new. Second Corinthians 5, 16, 17, the easy reading version says it like this. From this time on, we don't think of anyone as the world thinks of people. It is true that in the past, we thought of Christ as the world thinks, but we don't think that way now. When anyone is in Christ, it is a whole new world. The old things are gone suddenly Everything is new. And so when I'm made aware of the power of my thoughts, I'm now able to jump from the old to the new. I'm able to make a decision that I don't want to live this life anymore. I'm able to get over here in the new where God is doing a new thing, where God wants so much more for me that God doesn't want me to be the same girl that I am or the same man that I am, but he wants me over here in the new where he's doing a fabulous thing with my life. Remember the Bible? Bible tells us that he has a plan and he says, I know what I'm doing. I know the plans that I have for you. And these plans are good to give you a future and a hope that it's not going to cause you any harm. So when I'm made aware of the power of my thoughts, one thing, things happen. One, it gives me the ability to take my thoughts. I'm sorry. Number one is... And I jumped ahead of myself. Number one is it gives me the ability to switch my brain. Number two is it gives me the ability to take my thoughts captive. And number three is it gives me the ability to jump from the old into the new. And so I've got to always remember the story of David and how his thoughts just let, ran away with him. That juridical parable that Nathan came and threw on him that told him like, and he was able to repent right away. That is what we want to do. Whenever we are in those thoughts that are not lining up with God, we want to take from David. David didn't try to make any excuses. David repented. David was sorry for it. You know, Nathan told him, listen, God would have given you anything 
anything. Why did you do this? And it's the same thing with us. Our God, he will give us anything. So there's no need for us to concoct plans to do anything. There's no need for us to think on things that aren't of God too long. But no, we want to take uh, be aware of the power of our thoughts, understanding that when I'm aware of the power of my thoughts, that power gives me the ability to switch my brain. That same power gives me the ability to take those thoughts captive and make it obey the word of God. And that same power gives me the ability to jump from the old into this new thing that God is doing with me. This is how I begin to face the monster within. Amen. Hey, listen, that's the daily dosage for today. Facing the monster within part four. If you have not subscribed to the YouTube channel already, please do so because there you can find all of your dosages in one place. Follow me on social media platforms. God wants me whole. Visit the website, godwantsmewhole.org. You know how we do this thing. Come on, let's say it together. Say, God wants me whole, and I am. Again, I'm Regina Banks, your GPS to wholeness, a.k.a. I am the heart gatherer. Listen, I want you to go out there, have a spec while amazing day. Stay cool because it is hot out there. Look out for falling blessings because they are falling all around you. Know that I love you a bunch. I'll be right back here Monday as we continue on in. Facing the monster within. Once again, I love you guys a bunch. Make it spec while amazing.